will just give an introduction to this talk. So this will be about uh, the role of information geometry for um, um, uh, for prediction, for prediction of, of time sequences according to probabilistic models. Uh, and this will be around uh, Laplace's rule. So maybe you, you know that uh, there was this debate, knowing that I've seen the sun rise every day for my whole life, what's the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow again, or not rise? Because uh, the naive intuition is that uh, since I've always uh, seen the sun rise, the probability of it rising again is one, and obviously you have to allow for some possibility that the sun goes down or something. And so this is a real problem actually in, uh, in uh, machine learning. For instance, if you, have, uh, if you uh, look at who comes in, in the room and you see, um, and the first three people to come in the room are all women, then what's the probability that the next one is a man, actually? Uh, so if you use the, the most obvious estimator of the proportion of, of men and women in this conference, if, you, if you've seen only three women so far, well, there are 100% women. And so the probability that a man comes next is, is zero, according to this uh, maximum likelihood estimator. And so that's obviously wrong. Uh, of course, there are ways around that. And... Um, Okay, so I'll use a choke and blackboard. So um, if you have seen um, W women and N and M men so far, the maximum likelihood, likelihood estimator for the next person to come in is that the probability of, um, of men is equal to the number of men you've seen over m plus w, and the probability of women is equal to w over m plus w. Um, okay, so now this predicts that the probability uh, of a man is zero if you've never seen a man, which is uh, problematic if you want to estimate based on small sample sizes. So Laplace's rule is a quick fix for this formula, which, uh, which is, well, let's pretend that we have seen a man and a woman, uh, a woman that we have seen every possibility before we even got started. So let's pretend that the number of men and women we've actually seen is not W and M, but, but W plus one and M plus one. So now, according to Laplace, the uh, prediction for the next person to come in is given by, the, by this probability, M plus one and W plus one, divided by something to make, to make it sum to one. And um, that's uh, Laplace's rule in a, in a nutshell. So this can be extended to other uh, counting procedures as long as you have a discrete probability, uh, probability distribution on a finite set. You can do something like that. Um, oh, great. So it's here. Okay. And, uh, but it does look like a quick fix. A little bit. I mean, why would you do that? And the thing is, you have a very nice Bayesian interpretation for that. So now I will go into uh, the problem is I don't have it on the screen now. Okay. Okay. So I go back to the formal setting. You have a sequential prediction problem. You have past observations. Uh, say, uh, is, uh, I have seen a, uh, a man or a woman each time. And you build a probabilistic model for the next person, for the next observation. Uh, and you want to predict. So that's the basic example of, of men and women. And uh, you have a performance criterion. Well, I will not rely on this specific performance criterion, but it's one that is quite common. Uh, it's uh, uh, the accumulated log loss. Like if you uh, give one, probability one, to the actual event x t plus 1, then your loss is 0. 
And uh, a way to realize that is to uh, define the loss to be the log of the probability of xt plus 1 uh, given your past observations, and you sum that over time. And this is uh, this log loss corresponds to a compression cost in information theory. Uh, that is, given your probabilistic model, you can compress the whole sequence x1, xt using lt bits of information. And also, if your model is, is a Gaussian, sorry, this corresponds to uh, the the square error. So, uh, because the log of exponential minus x square is x square, so uh, for, for Gaussian distributions, this is just the uh, square error. Um, so, that was the problem. And now, uh, the predictor I started with was the maximum likelihood predictor, which is uh, given the set of past observations, you uh, look for the value of the parameter of your model that maximizes the probability of past observations. So you define the theta maximum likelihood, which is the argmax of the past probability, assuming an independent model for the past. Um, I'm going to say more about independence later. Uh, and this is also the argmin, by taking logs, of, of the loss over the past, uh, of the accumulated loss over the past examples. So that's the maximum likelihood estimator given past data. And then you use this parameter to predict the next value of x. So uh, this is used a lot in machine learning, um, especially um, uh, when you have a complex model uh, p theta uh, involving a lot of parameters. And then usually you compute this argmax or argmin by using gradient descent over the space of parameters. So this is really relevant in, in practice. But there are problems uh, even uh, in, the, uh, in the simplest examples, there are already problems with this estimator, which I mentioned. So if you estimate uh, the proportion of men in a conference to be m over w plus m according to the observations so far, uh, it's clear that, well, first, how do you predict the first observation? When you don't have any observations, you have 0 over 0. That's undefined. Uh, so that's a first problem, but it's not a big problem in practice. Uh, this is a much more serious problem in practice. Possibilities that you've never seen so far get probability zero according to this. And so when you just have Bernoulli distributions over uh, a finite set of outcomes, this isn't much of a problem because usually uh, the set of outcomes is pretty small. But when you deal, for instance, with uh, Markov models for text, uh, it's clear that when you go for longer memories, you haven't seen all possible combinations of letters or all possible combinations of words in a given language. And so if you use that to predict, you're going to, uh, to give probability zero to most sentences if you use uh, a Markov model. And that's not good. That's not good at all. So this is a much more serious problem. And um, also, uh, a more general version of this problem is that you get overfit. That is, uh, the estimator is too close to the past data. Uh, so uh, the, the zero frequency problem is a particular ca case of overfit in which you, you get a model that is really, really describing what you've seen so far and nothing else. So there is a well-known alternative uh, to this. So I was uh, going to uh, discuss Laplace's rule of succession, uh, which is just add one to all the counts, and that's a kind of, of quick fix. But just to give you the order of magnitudes, uh, so if you've seen uh, after time t and, and you've seen only t women and zero men, uh, the probability to see a man next is estimated to be 1 over t plus 2. So remember this order of magnitude 1 over t because it, we, it will play a role in, in, uh, in the next slides. So typically different, different predictors differ at order 1 over t. So we want to get the 1 over t term right. Um, and so this uh, Laplace's rule uh, discrete uh, generalizes to, to other discrete data. And now uh, the next uh, point is that this rule, uh, which may seem completely arbitrary, uh, arbitrary uh, has a beautiful Bayesian interpretation, uh, which allows uh, to, to uh, which allows us to, to recover it from first principles or almost, almost actually, not exactly. So uh, for this, I need to define what is a Bayesian predictor. So uh, if you start with a 
um, um, parametric model p theta for your data x, and uh, you also have an idea of possible values of theta, and this idea of possible values of theta is represented by a prior, which is a probability distribution of theta, which is alpha of theta in this uh, notation here. And um, at each time, the next symbol is computed ac or according to a mixture of all possible values of theta, and uh, the, the weights of this mixture, so that's going to be an integral of a theta, of p theta, for x t plus 1, and p theta is weighted by the posterior, uh, uh, the posterior weight of theta, which is given by the well-known Bayesian formula. Uh, the posterior qt of theta is proportional to the probability of past data multiplied by the prior of theta. So you get this integral, and if you can compute this integral, then you can compute the base, uh, the base prediction for the xt plus 1, knowing x1, xt. Uh, the problem is, in general, we cannot compute this integral. We can compute it for some very simple models, but uh, usually uh, it's, it's very difficult to compute. Uh, there are possibilities to approximate it, but they are not that easy to deal with, because um, you must deal with this integral of a theta, and you must maintain the posterior. And the posterior um, can have any shape at all. The posterior is an arbitrary, uh, is a uh, com completely arbitrary function of, of theta. Uh, Q theta must be maintained, and so uh, people use uh, to approximate Q theta by um, um, a sm a small dimensional family of functions, for instance. Um, that is one possibility, but in practice, it's not so easy. But what I want to emphasize here is that in this uh, formalism, you can recover, you can recover uh, Laplace's rule. That is, if you start with a Bernoulli model and you have probability theta to see a woman and 1 minus theta to see a man, and you put a Bayesian prior which is uniform on theta in 0, 1, then uh, the Bayesian predictor coincides exactly with uh, Laplace's rule. So that is well known. I, I don't even know for how much time this has been known. Maybe, maybe uh, Laplace, actually. Um, so um, you get an explanation for uh, this uh, Laplace predictor. And what's more, you see that in this case, uh, the Bayesian predictor is very easy to compute because uh, uh, Laplace's rule is very easy to implement. Um, this is extremely specific to uh, this particular case of Bernoulli or multinomial distributions. In general, it's not true that Bayesian predictors uh, uh, amount to such a simple rule. And so, in that case, it's very easy to compute the Bayesian predictor, but in, in more general cases, you have to deal with this integral and with the prior uh, and so on. So, my goal for this talk is to, uh, come, uh, to come up with a simple rule looking a little bit like this, to approximate Bayesian predictors. Because in general, uh, Bayesian predictors have many advantages, but they are difficult to compute. And I want to uh, try to generalize Laplace's rules. Uh, it will not be exact, but it will be approximate at first order in 1 over t. Remember, typically, um, different uh, predictions differ by 1 over t. Uh, in, uh, so I want to get at least this order right, and I want to get this using a simple rule. So uh, Bayesian predictors, um, they solve the zero frequency problem because you have a prior on theta, and if your prior mixes, uh, gives positive weight to all values of theta, then you get a little bit of everything in your prediction, and that means that uh, usually probabilities are not zero even for things you have not seen so far. Uh, you have some theoretical guarantees. I will not talk about that today. Uh, you don't have any overfit. Uh, you, you don't have the problem that uh, your posterior distribution or your predictions uh, are too close to what you've seen. You don't have that with, uh, with uh, Bayesian predictors. Actually, you have the opposite problem sometimes. You underfit. You, you are too close to uniform or something. But there are ways around that. Um, and this is not my topic today, but 
in principle, if we could use them easily, uh, they could really uh, be more important. And the main problem is that they are real difficult to compute. So right now in machine learning, they are being used more and more using a lot of approximations. Um, but still, um, there remains the question of uh, whether there is a simple way to approximate these uh, Bayesian predictions. Uh, and uh, is there a simple way that, is, um, that somehow has something to do with uh, Laplace's rule? Okay, so uh, the theorem is yes in some cases. And the theorem starts with an exponential family of probability distribution. So just to remind uh, you, an exponential family means that your probabilistic model is of the form um, p theta of x, so equal exponential sum over theta i t i of x. So you have uh, uh, predictions uh, to be made in arbitrary in an arbitrary space x, uh, big big x, and you have functions t one tn from x to r and you say that you have an exponential family if your uh, if your probability distribution for x with parameter theta is proportional to these uh, Boltzmann like uh, distributions okay so you have an exponential family of probability distributions and then under some uh, suitable regularity conditions which I will not mention today um, I have a theorem that uh, two, um, I have two ways of computing the Bayesian predictor. So at first order in one over t, which is the order I'm interested in, um, uh, these two things coincide. The first is the Bayesian predictor with a particular prior, and this particular prior is the only canonical prior um, that you can find for general probability distribution, and that is given by uh, the Fisher information matrix. So uh, you probably know that um, if you have a family of probability distributions, you can turn it, turn this the space of theta into a Riemannian manifold uh, with uh, the metric given by the uh, Fisher information matrix, which I will recall here. So it's the product of partial derivative of log likelihoods. And this defines a positive matrix. And you can use this positive matrix as a metric, a Riemannian metric on the space theta. And you have a, an associated uh, Riemannian volume form, which is given by the square root of the determinant of i. And uh, this is called the, uh, the Jeffreys prior. Uh, sometimes it's finite, sometimes it's, it's infinite, and the theorem holds. Uh, usually, after a few observations, this is finite. This uh, gives finite volume. So the theorem holds as long as the posterior uh, is finite. Um, so you have this Bayesian predictor, which is uh, somehow the only canonical Bayesian predictor. And this one can be easily approximated by changing a little bit the maximum likelihood estimator in a way I'm going to explain. So, um, so um, PML here is the maximum likelihood estimator that we saw before, and PSNML is the so-called sequential normalized maximum likelihood predictor, which uh, is based on ideas from universal coding theory. It's been introduced by uh, Starkov uh, 20 years ago, uh, 30 years ago now. Oh, uh, and uh, expanded upon by uh, a lot of people, uh, including uh, Rissanen in particular. So it's really based in um, information theory and, and coding theory. And uh, it's a little bit like uh, Laplace's rule. Actually, uh, for Bernoulli distributions, PSNML is equal to Laplace's rule. Yeah, two minutes, okay. Uh, so I'm just going to um, define what it is. So the sequential, uh, the SNML predictor is um, 
you, for each possible value of the next observation, you use uh, the value of theta that gives more weight to that possibility. So for each y, you have um, a value of the maximum likelihood estimator if you had already observed it. So, and now you're going to decide that the probability of y is given by the probability using the model that has already seen y. Of course, you're increasing the probability of every possibility. So usually, um, your probability is sum to something greater than one, but then you just rescale, and you use this for prediction. So for Bernoulli distribution, this is e exactly Laplace's rule. So um, for each, uh, for each possible value, you use the value of the parameter that, uh, would, that would be the maximum likelihood if the possible value had already been observed, which isn't the case. And now, so for a Bernoulli distribution, the, uh, this is exactly the same as Laplace's rule, and the theorem states that the Bayesian predictor with canonical Jeffress prior is approximately the average of the maximum likelihood and this modified maximum likelihood SNML estimator. So for Bernoulli distribution, you get that the um, Jeffreys prior lies halfway between uh, uh, maximum likelihood and Laplace's rule. That is, you, you get the uh, add one half rule instead of add one rule. And this was well known for the Jeffreys prior for Bernoulli distributions. Uh, this is relatively easy to compute. Um, also note that um, we get the 1 over t term right in the theorem, and um, we have a remaining error 1 over uh, t square, and this uh, contributes, since 1 over t square is summable, this contributes only to uh, a finite uh, difference on cumulate log loss, if you're uh, worried about the, the size of the errors. And uh, in particular, we get uh, a new formula, a new explicit formula, um, for uh, how to modify the ML predictor um, uh, to get the Je Jeffreys, uh, the prediction of the um, uh, Bayesian prior with Jeffreys, uh, uh, with Jeffreys prior, um, and the uh, the correction that you have to uh, incorporate is given by the norm of the gradient of the new data in the Fisher metric, in the Fisher information metric. Um, so we can do arbitrary priors if we uh, modify a little bit the definition of PS and ML to incorporate the square of the density of the prior with respect to the Jeffreys universal prior. So uh, the Jeffreys prior really plays a central role in that because if you want to approximate the Bayesian predictors, you get something very simple if you want to approximate the Jeffreys prior and if you want to approximate another prior, you have to uh, modify to incorporate the square of the density of your prior with respect to the universal prior. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, shift that. Uh, to, to, uh, and so the conclusion is that uh, for exponential families, um, Bayesian priors can be approximated, actually, uh, using modified maximum likelihood predictors, uh, using simple rules, because you've seen the definition of PS and ML, it's not that complicated. Um, uh, and the difference uh, can be exactly written, uh, so you have this modified formula, P, uh, P base equal P ML times one plus the square norm of the Fisher, uh, the square norm of the, of the gradient of the new point. Um, there is, uh, so I didn't have time to talk about that, but there is a systematic direction of the difference of the center of mass, so to speak, between the uh, Bayesian prior and uh, the maximum likelihood predictor. Even if you use the uh, universal uh, Bayesian prior, it is not centered at the maximum likelihood predictor. There is a canonical vector field on any statistical manifold that tells you about the difference, the direction of the difference. And this vector field is completely canonical. Uh, if you have a statistical manifold, there is a vector field which tells you, well, on average, Bayesian predictors are a little bit more in that direction. And uh, finally, um, at least formally in, uh, in, uh, in the physicist's uh, sense, uh, this extends to uh, non-IID uh, models. Uh, if uh, you have, for instance, a Markov model uh, such that uh, P uh, at each time, P theta of x t plus 1, knowing the past data, belongs to an exponential family. So that typically covers uh, Markov models. Thank you.